Unless you've been living under a rock lately, you've probably been hearing nonstop about OpenAI's new AI chatbot, ChatGPT. I've been bombarded by people talking about this thing, so I thought I would go and see what the hype was about and give ChatGPT a little test run. So if you're brand new to AI tools like ChatGPT, like I was before I started researching for this video, then there's a couple things you're probably wondering. For one, how the heck do I use this thing? And second, what can I even use it for? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process and get you using ChatGPT like an old pro if there's even something called an old pro with a tool this new. But in any case, I'm gonna get you up and using this tool and comfortable with it. So let's go. So let's get set up. First of all, ChatGPT is completely free. All you have to do is go on over to openai.com. And if you click here on this little banner at the top and go to try, it'll take you over to the actual ChatGPT. Now, if you haven't signed up yet, you're gonna have to go through and create an account, create a login, give your name and phone number, I think, for two-factor authentication and all of that stuff. But once you've set that all up, then this is the ChatGPT interface. So you can get started right away. And immediately I can go over here to the chat box and start typing away to the AI. This will create a conversation. You can see over here on the left, it has saved my past conversations I've had. So I can go back and see see the sessions I have had with the chatbot from earlier. So just to illustrate what that looks like, I'm just gonna ask it a basic question. So what's five plus five? And the chatbot's gonna think for a second and it's gonna give me an answer. And when you create a conversation, you can see now this is added over to my sidebar. It has saved the conversation and I can ask a question, it'll answer, and then I can type and continue that conversation with the chatbot, ask it more questions or ask it to elaborate or change the direction that we've gone into. Every time you create a conversation with ChatGPT, it's going to remember the things you said before earlier in the conversation. So if I go and say, let's add two to that. See, and then, so then it thinks and then it answers. If you add two to 10, the result will be 12. So it is remembering what I said earlier in the conversation. But say I wanna talk about something else, ask some different questions and not have it remember what we talked about before. I can simply go up here to the left and click and go to start a new chat. A couple of things to remember, there are some limitations to ChatGPT, and it tells you a few of them here right on the homepage. There are some guardrails put in place by the parent company for various reasons. And because of that, ChatGPT will often refuse to answer questions that it deems to be inappropriate. So if I type into the box, how can I start a revolution? It's probably not going to give me an answer. And as we see, it's giving me an excuse that it is not allowed to encourage things that promote harm or violence. And, you know, revolutions tend to be violent, so it's not going to give me a plan for how I could do that. Another thing with ChatGPT is that it has a it has a definite political bias. It is a left-leaning political bias. I don't know if I can get it to repeat this, but I've seen screenshots people have shared on Twitter where they ask ChatGPT to write a poem praising President Trump and it refuses, and then they can ask the same thing, say, write a poem praising President Biden, and it will write the poem. Let's just see if I can get it to repeat that. Yeah, see, if I say to write a poem praising President Trump, it's giving me the excuse, it's not gonna do it. See, and this is exactly what people have been complaining about on Twitter. It will not write a poem praising Donald Trump, but it will write one praising Biden. So the political bias is pretty blatant at this point. The next big limitation on ChatGPT is that it has limited knowledge up until 2021. So if you're asking it questions to do with anything that has happened since then, like if you wanted to ask it who won the Super Bowl this year or anything that happened post 2021, it's not going to have an answer for you. This is one of the reasons I am excited and impatient to get access to Bing's new chatbot because it is connected to the internet, whereas ChatGPT is not. ChatGPT cannot search the internet and find out who won the Super Bowl this year. Whereas I've seen videos of people playing with the Bing chatbot and because it is connected to the internet, it can go and answer these more relevant current questions. So just something to keep in mind that there is that hard limit of the date that it knows about things. And just one more thing to keep in mind is that the things that ChatGPT says are not necessarily true. It has been known to make things up or, 
you know, give you an answer where most of it's right, but it'll throw in little facts in there that just it pulled out of nowhere. Nobody really knows where it came from. So when you are say using ChatGB to research or do something important, you do need to go and check sources, double check that what it has told you is right. Because a lot of times it throws things in there that just simply are not true. So using ChatGPT is really simple. All you do basically is, you know, type things into the box and it'll answer your questions or do what you tell it to do. So that's pretty vague. That's pretty broad and what you can use it for. Let's go through some of the most useful things that I found that you can use ChatGPT for. So first up, it can simply answer basic questions. So as I did before, I asked it basic math questions. You can ask it basic trivia questions. So like who was the, who was the first president of the United States? And it's going to tell you George Washington and give you some information about him. So it'll generate an answer for you. And if you are not quite satisfied with the answer or you wanted a variation on that, you can click to regenerate the response and it will do that. So this is going to answer it in a different way. And once you've done that, if you hover over your answer, you can toggle through and see all the answers that it has regenerated. So if you're looking for something specific, you want to pick out the best one, we can do that. One way that I've been using ChatGPT is help in researching things that I am working on. So say I want to learn how does Bitcoin work? And I want to get some recommendations for books or articles or things that I can read so I can learn about that. So I can plug that into ChatGPT and ask it to recommend me some books. So I want to learn how Bitcoin works. Can you give me a list of books I should read? So it says, sure, here are some books that can help you understand how Bitcoin works. So it's going to list them off and give me some recommendations. And that's a quicker way for me to go and find what I should be reading to learn on this specific topic. And it gives me the names of the books, the authors, and a short description of what each of those is about. I can also use ChatGPT to summarize long form content, like say an article or a book or a video transcript and summarize that in a short, concise manner. So say I have found this article and I want it to summarize the main point so I don't have to read. So I want to get a summary. So let's see if ChatGPT will summarize that for me. So I paste that in asking it to summarize the article and it's going to go and give me a summary of what this blog post is about. Maybe this is still too complex. This is too uh, long and I want to summarize this in one sentence. So summarize that again in one paragraph explaining like I'm five. So I want to simplify that even more and as you can see, okay, the article talks about how to pick a job that makes you happy. It says that many people focus on making money and being important when they pick a job, but that it's more important to find a job you like and that makes you feel good. And you know, it takes three or four sentences, does it in one paragraph and does that using simpler language, explaining it like I'm five. So this is something I really like about ChatGPT is that I can ask it a question, get an answer, and then ask it to tweak that down for me if that's not exactly what I was looking for. So for research, and for learning, it is a really great tool. The next thing ChatGPT is useful for is for drafting emails. So let's say somebody reached out to me and wanted to meet me for coffee to pick my brain on how to how I do stuff on YouTube. And maybe I don't have time for that. And I, I want to ask ChatGPT to write me an email politely declining the offer. So write an email politely declining someone who wants to meet for coffee to pick my brain. So it gives me a subject and it gives me an email and yeah, dear name of person. I hope this email finds you well. I received your request for coffee meeting to pick my brain and appreciate your interest in speaking with me. However, I regret to inform you that I will not be able to meet you in person at this time. And it goes on and, and rejects them in a polite, nice way. And for me, I do not like writing emails. This stuff is tedious and I always second guess what I should say and what I should not. So a tool like this is really helpful because I can simply ask ChatGBT to put that in there. So say maybe this is a bit too long. I could ask it to shorten that and make it a little more casual. So, okay, this is what it spits out. And yes, that looks a little more casual. It's shorter than the initial long reply it gave me. So it could still go a little shorter and I could ask it to do that if I wanted to, but you can keep tweaking until you get something that you want or regenerate the response and see a couple different variations of that. And of course that leads us to the next use, which is for writing cover letters and resumes. So let's try to get it to write me a resume. So let's write me a resume for a software developer job at Facebook. I have work experience at Google and Amazon and I went to school at Harvard. So you do want to be a bit more specific with things like this. Otherwise it's going to just fill in the blank with 
random job experience and skills that you might not have. So you could give it even a bulleted list of all the places you've worked or the skills you want it to include. And it's going to go and write you a resume with that information. So this kind of stuff, you're probably gonna have to do a bit of tweaking on your own, but it gives you a great place to start. And you can do the same for a cover letter as well. The next thing you can use ChatGPT for is to write things like blog posts, video scripts, and social media posts. So for example, whoops. So for example, write me a 400 word blog post on how Bitcoin is going to change the world. And it's gonna go do that, it's gonna spit that out. And I'm gonna look at this and depending on what it spits out, I've found that sometimes what it writes could be a little bit generic, but it might give me a good base to start with or give me some points to write about that I wouldn't have thought of on my own. Now, personally, if I was going to use this to write things like blog posts, I would probably do something like this to get an idea of where to start and then edit that and add in my own perspectives and stuff into that as well. But you can also get it to generate that. And then, you know, if you want it to take a different direction, tell it to write things a little more concisely, a little more casually, or add in some bullet points here or whatever you need it to do. This also works really well for social media posts and video scripts as well. I've personally used it before to script some parts of some videos I've written often when it's something that's a little more generic and it's not something that, you know, I'm explaining something that I've done from my point of view that it wouldn't know if it's just, you know, I need a definition of what is sound money or how does blockchain technology work? It can spit out an explanation that would do that a lot faster than I would probably be able to. I'm not going to go through and read all of this, but maybe I want this article on Bitcoin to focus more on the environmental impact. So I could say rewrite that again, but focus more on highlighting the environmental impact. And it's going to rewrite that with a higher focus on that subject. Now that also brings us to the next use. You can also use ChatGPT for things like creative writing. Now you've probably seen a lot of things floating around where people are asking it to do things like write a poem in the style of a certain person. So for example, write a poem about Bitcoin in the style of Edgar Allan Poe. And I can do that and it's going to write it out. And the last time I got it to do this, it was actually pretty good. Um, it was pretty entertaining. So you can use ChatGPT for creative writing projects as well. ChatGPT is also useful for the editing process. So maybe I have a lot of text messages or, you know, social media, Twitter posts that I don't have proper grammar and I would like to turn that into properly formatted sentences to, I don't know, save somewhere right in a blog post. So I could copy and paste something that I have written without proper grammar and ask it to add in proper formatting a grammar and spit it back out. So I've asked it to rewrite the following with proper grammar and punctuation. And then I've pasted in some stuff. Oh, is it not going to go? Okay, so it's giving me an error right now, but you could ask it to rewrite the following with proper grammar and punctuation and then give it a list of say bullet points or unformatted text and get it to spit that back out properly. I'm not sure what's going on here, but it is not working at the moment. Okay, so here's an example I did before. So I had this list of bullet points and I asked it to format the following into paragraphs with proper grammar. So I have this list of basic use cases from the script of this video. And it gives me that back, but then again, it goes down here and then it writes this all out in paragraphs. So it explains each of the points in that list and writes out proper paragraphs explaining each of those points. So that can be useful in a number of ways. ChatGPT is also really useful for generating ideas. So here's an example I did yesterday. I wanna have Mexican for dinner tonight. Can you give me some ideas for easy recipes to make? And sure, here are some easy Mexican recipes you can try for dinner tonight. And it gives, goes and lists off five different Mexican recipes I could do. Okay, so let's take that a step further. So say I wanted to make one of these things. So say I wanted to make fajitas, but for somebody with a dairy allergy, I just ask it, can you tell me how to make the fajitas for someone with a dairy allergy? And it goes, it says, certainly here's a recipe that is dairy free. And it gives me all of the ingredients that I want for instructions on how to make it and all of that. So taking that a step further, if it hadn't already given me this list of ingredients, I could ask it to make me a shopping list based on that recipe. And it would spit that out for me so I can go to the store, get all the things I need. It can be useful for life things or creative projects. So here I asked it to provide five viral YouTube video topic ideas about 
Bitcoin. And here it goes. It generates five different ones. It gives me a topic idea and a short summary of what that video would be about. So maybe I like one of these ideas, maybe I like this Bitcoin versus gold, which is a better investment idea. Maybe I like that. And I want it to give me some title variations for me to pick from. So here I've done that. Give me a couple of title variations and sure. It gives me five different title variations on that video topic. Okay. Let's take that even a step further. Can you write an outline for a YouTube video script titled investing in uncertain times? Is Bitcoin or gold a safer bet? I've simply taken one of these title ideas that I liked and asked it to write me an outline. So of course, ChatGPT goes and it writes me an outline for a video on that topic. And I'm haven't really gone through and looked at this in too much depth, but this is probably a good place to start. Um, it gives me different headings, different sections to cover in that video as a script and bullet points to talk about. And honestly, this is how I do my video scripts to begin with. I do just do them in bullet points. So I might take this, tweak it and actually turn that into a video in the future. And you could do the same thing for generating blog post ideas, social media post ideas, videos, what have you. Another thing people are using ChatGPT for quite successfully, which is a bit out of my comfort zone, but they're using it to generate code and to help them build applications. So if I just ask it something simple, can you write code in Python for a simple calculator app? And it's going to go say yes, that it can write that. And here's an example of code that allows users to perform basic arithmetic operations. Now I'm not a developer, so I couldn't tell you if this is actually good code or not, but I'm seeing a lot of people that do code for a living using this to help them solve problems or to give them ideas and places to start with. So I think there's probably a lot of potential there for using it to write and come up with ideas for coding and applications as well. If you're a developer or a software engineer, do let me know what you think about this. Um, if have you used it, has it been helpful to you? I'd love to know from somebody who actually knows what this is all about. So those are 10 different use cases for ChatGPT. These are the ones that I found most compelling and most useful, but let me know what you think, what you've had experience with. Have you tried any of these? Have you found them useful? Or have you tried things that I didn't cover in this video? I'd love to hear what you guys are using this new technology to accomplish. This is obviously a brand new technology. So I think we've barely begun to scratch the surface of what is possible with tools like this, what we can do with it. And we're so stuck in our old ways of thinking about new tech and new ideas in ways that we've done things before. I'm personally just getting started playing around with it. And so far, I already think it's looking pretty promising. The biggest thing I'm looking forward to right now is getting access to new Bing or Bing's chatbot, which is built on, I think, a newer version of GPT and combining that with search. So I don't know about you, but I have really felt over the last several years that Google search has just become abysmal. It is useless almost. It's all everything you get in search results is just SEO to shit. It's big websites and it's impossible to find actual information that you're looking for. Now I'm tired personally of adding Reddit onto the end of every search term. And I'm excited to see if Bing's new chatbot is able to help me actually find the information I'm looking for because I'll be able to chat back and forth with it to get it to actually listen to specific things I'm looking for. Whereas Google doesn't really let you do that anymore, but I'm super excited for seeing where this all goes and to see what comes next. This stuff's coming at us so quickly. You know, chat GPT only came out a couple of months ago. And before that we had all of the image generators like stable diffusion, Dolly, mid journey, and all of that that came out less than a year ago. So it's crazy exciting and I can't wait to see what comes next. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, if you got something out of it, please give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe and give it a share. I truly appreciate all of your support. But otherwise, if you're ready to learn more, I'm definitely gonna be covering more of this type of content in the future. Check out one of these videos next and I will see you guys on the flip side.